we have been seated on these seats with fully purchased as fully purchased commodity for Christ and while you are sitting here you can rest assured that whatever worries you have bought with you is not your worries at all heaven is going to act on it heaven is going to give you a provision for it and there is grace and grace in abundance for each and every one of us to get through in life Amen. with that I would like to step back into Old Testament and walk through a story and we will look at certain things in that right so story uh, the, the the main character of the story is none other than Joshua so Joshua at a very tender age sees Israelites suffering he hears their groans he hears their pleas his lifestyle is pathetic he sees Moses he sees Moses in the palace he sees Moses running away and he sees Moses coming back to him Moses is a towering personality he is a towering personality in two fronts one as a Hebrew two as a well-educated, well-cultured, a very sophisticated and overall a man with whom God talks face to face. So when Exodus starts, Moses takes Joshua under his wings, right? So while Joshua is this character that follows Moses, in, in the shadows, he's literally in the shadows, he does not take the limelight at all. In the shadows, from the shadows, what he sees is, during Moses' reign, what he sees is, one, he brings a superpower to its knees. Economically, strategically, and even military-wise, right? Just imagine what does it take to bring US to its knees. It's it's very complicated task. Single-handedly, Moses does it. Of course, God does it through Moses. So, one nation is being brought to its knees. A, a series of unexplainable, unnatural, heavenly intervention happens. Starting from the first thing I would call is pillar by day and night. The, pillar of cloud and the pillar of uh, fire splitting of the Red Sea you cross over to the other side there is heavenly provision in, in the form of manna in the form of the quail there is there is miracle after miracles and and the first military action that takes place is Arad Arad is the first group of people who comes against the Israelites not because of any of their doings they just come after them right Joshua in the shadow of Moses sees how Arad is destroyed he sees how Sihon is destroyed he sees how Og is devastated he sees all that he sees the Ten Commandments coming down. He sees a lot of things that is enough to blow one's mind away and put the trust that you need in God blindly. Amen. Now, Joshua is... Moses has passed away. Now, that's the important part. Moses is no more. Joshua gets to be the next one who leads the Israelites is he tensed he should be because he has seen how Israelites grumble he has seen how Israelites react he has seen how God reacts to their reaction so Israelites are now camped at uh, near, uh, hold on hold on Israelites are now camped in a plain, the plain of Abel Shittim, right? Now this is the story that I want you to guys look at. Now 
Okay, so now we have Joshua who is who has seen enough and more, but he is he has not he has not led anything. This is his first operation trying to lead the Israelites. He has seen enough, he is confident that there is God, he has fully trusted in him. Now he is going to cross over Jordan. Right? Now Jordan is at its flood stage, all during harvest. Yet, as soon as the priest who carried the ark reached Jordan and their feet touched the water's edge, the water from upstream stopped flowing. All this is simple. It piled up in a great distance at a town <coughs> called Adam in the vicinity of Zerathan. While the water flowing down to the Sea of Araba, the Salt Sea, was completely cut off. Now, God divided the Red Sea, that is pretty evident. Folks crossed over to Jordan, divided Jordan. That would have been sufficient for us. But what picked my interest was, why is there a lot of description on water stopped flowing downhill, water was uh, at the harvest, it was like flood stage, it stopped up at a place and all these things. Now, the map that is shown over there, right? Can you guys see Jericho? Yes. <coughs> Can you guys see Jericho over here? Yeah, for some reason I couldn't find a map that is, that Jericho is there in both places, right? So, that is Jericho. <coughs> that works. I think so. Huh? Nice. Oh, okay. So, where is Jericho? Okay, so this is, so I had two maps in here because I could not find a map in which Jericho was described. So, if you look at all those landmarks, this is Jericho in here, which means Jericho should be here. Right? Okay. Now, Israelites are camped at Abel Shittim. Now, the verse says, at a great distance away from a town, at a town called Adam. This is Abel Shittim. This is Adam. Why? Why? It's, okay, let me put you another thing. This map, approximately, there is a scale which is on the side that is lazy enough not to cut it. So, this distance, or, or if you look at the, dist, the thing called Shiloh, that much distance is 10 miles. So, this much is 10 miles. This is, this is Jericho, by the way. Abel Shittim is approximately 10 to 15 miles. And Adam, over here, is roughly 20 miles. Why? Why did God stop an overflowing river 20 miles upstream? Man for 600,000 or 700,000 to cross? I would say eight file line, I don't think you need more than a mile. Why? That's, that's number one. I believe it is to assure Joshua that I've got your back. This is his first gig. This is his first rodeo. He has not led anything. He is not confident. He is, he is simple. He is true to the core. He will lay down his life. But that's not the point here. He has to come to a point where he says, yes, God will do this. But I think Joshua was not really confident. If you turn with me to the Hall of Fame of faith. Hebrews. Hebrews 11 verses 30. What does it say? By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after the people had marched around them for seven days. By faith, walls of Jericho fell after the people 
had marched around them for seven days. Is Joshua in that sentence? Joshua is not in that sentence. Why? Whose name is in that sentence? Everybody's. The people. God honored the faith of the people. Now where did the people get the faith from? If you actually, God, Joshua, Joshua is not accepted. Joshua is not at all accepted. It's just a matter of a case where everybody is as confident as Joshua. And it's just that Joshua's faith does not really stand out. It's like this entire congregation believes in one thing. And nobody's faith stands out. Another question. Is uh, Joshua's faith anyway affected by this water that stopped 10 miles or 50, 20 miles up? Okay, all right. <laughs> this is a plane. This is a plane, right? How do rivers flow? Downstream. 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 Which means he is standing on a low ground. What happens when you look at a river from low ground upwards? You see the entire river. Which means I believe that Joshua may have seen this water stop 20 miles up. He might have stood on the plains of Abel Shittim and looked to see the river stop way upstream. Whereas his, his group of people are really small and they don't need 20 mile gap to cross through. Now, you cross all these things and you come over to the, oh, no, the other part. Water here stops right here. Jericho is here. So what happens to the water here? There's no water. Which means, before Joshua and team landed on the gates of Jericho, Jericho's water supply was cut off. Jericho does not have an inbound stream. It has a small stream, but that stream is cut off. There is no way that they're getting water. Which is, which is why I think by the time the spies reached um, Rahab, they were like, okay, everybody inside is really melting with fear. God actually does things to put fear into the enemies. That is, that's not anybody's doing, it's just God's doing. Amen. Okay. Now, my question was, how did the other people, how did the people along with Joshua have this accelerated faith? So, we turn back to Joshua 6 or 5, where the angel of the Lord appears. The angel of the Lord appears, does, it, does he appear only to Joshua? No. It does not say. It does not say it was a man only to Joshua. There is a good chance that everybody saw him. There is a good chance that everybody saw a powerful being that did not come across like a man because Joshua threw everything and fell on his knees. So everybody's uh, faith or everybody was in the same state of mind. That kind of was a side topic on why Joshua's name is not recorded in the Hall of Fame. Now, if we can go to the second, they destroy, they destroy Jericho, N no doubt there. What does Jericho mean to Joshua? Jericho is new. He has been with Moses for a while. He has seen tactics. He has seen maneuvers. He has seen how to deal with problems. He has seen financial crisis solved. He has seen provision come from heaven. But Jericho is new. Why? We'll get to that. Jericho is out of Joshua's league. Now, think about these guys, right? 
they come out of Egypt. They did not come out with sophisticated weaponry or weapon systems or anything. They are a bunch of slaves who has not seen anything good in life. They are God's own people, granted, but they do not have anything good going for them. God has to teach them basic cleanliness. They have God has to teach them basic mannerisms. God has to do everything for them. Basically, it's a diaper change operation. God has to do everything for them and cares for them to the nth degree that God says, do not eat anything if a lizard falls in your pot. It's that simple. God cares. That is the state of Israel. So when Israel comes out, they are going against a fortified city. Now, just to make it really, really clear. Historians account wall of Jericho being 25 feet by 22 feet. It is pretty much a solid block. You cannot, with a bunch of slaves like this, you cannot breach the walls of Jericho. So, Jericho is something new. Og did not have a wall. Sihon did not have a wall. Arabites came against these guys, right? And they were like filled with anger. They just destroyed them all. But this is a first fortified city. This is new. He is brand new to this. Jericho is out of Joshua's league. Jericho is hostile. It says, Jericho is not a peace-loving place. In the next verse, God actually says that, hey, I'm giving every... Okay, let's get wait for that day also. Jericho is hostile. Jericho is superior in resources and well protected. A man's average height is around six, or maybe at best, right? You can say that there are a couple of people around seven foot. But you build a human ladder, you still cannot scale some 25 feet tall walls. It's pretty difficult. Jericho is unforgiving. You mess with Jericho, you have no idea what comes out of those walls. You have no idea when their trap doors open and what falls up. Jericho is a determining factor in Joshua's life. It's his first gig. It's his first time of leading a group of people that were trusted into his hands. He cannot play uh, it in a casual fashion. He has to play his cards right. As a commander, as a leader, everybody evaluates you on your first performance. Jericho will make or break Joshua. Details unknown far outweighs the details that are known. Okay, they went into the, uh, the Rehab so told that hey, these guys are scared, you know what, you guys will have an easy time, hey, by, by the way, spare me. All that is great. But the spies don't have a good tally of their armory. They do not have any kind of statistics on how many, even if they know these guys have nothing to match it. These much are the issues that are standing against Joshua. If we can go to the next slide, we will see what Joshua has in his favor. He gets a mail. Joshua, I have delivered Jericho into your hands along with his king and fighting men, your God. One line promise. One line promise. Amen. Jericho got destroyed in 1400 BC. Jericho, the city got destroyed. Jericho is a situation to us. Jericho is not a, or it's not a literal place. Jericho is there in our day-to-day -day life. Amen. And we are faced with all the scenarios that we mentioned about. Our situation is hostile, our situation is superior, our situation is unconquerable, our situation is unbreachable, our situation, we have no idea what's on the other side of the situation, but we have one line promises all throughout this Bible. Do we see our situation greater than the one line promise? <coughs> Jericho was a make or, dream, make or break deal for Joshua. We are called to raise to the ground several Jerichos in our lives. Jericho can be attributed to any sin that we struggle with. Any sin. It can be anything. 
we, we, we have a tough time dealing with our habits. We have a tough time dealing with our situations in life. We cannot break through. I hope and pray you don't break through. Because if you break through, you will always be proud of the fact that you broke through. God will take you through it. God will take each and every one blast through Jericho and it will be by his might. If we can go to the next slide. We will say, I have no hope of destroying Jericho. Let's turn to Romans 4, 18 through 20. Okay. Against all hope, Abraham, in hope, believed and so became the father of many nations, just as it has been said to him, so shall your offsprings be. Yet he did not, the next one is, uh, we move on to 20. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God being fully persuaded that God had the power to do what he has promised. Now, all that is great. The only thing that I want to harp on is, yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promises of God, but was fully strengthened in faith and gave glory to God. Being fully persuaded. You, we, as brothers and sisters in Christ who are struggling to live a holy life, who are struggling with our our self life part carnality part world part whatever we have to be fully persuaded that we cannot break out of it we will go into self condemnation if we try to break out, break out of it god has an amazing sense of humor and timing i was pretty good last week the week before actually I was pretty good and, and, and I was like, if I get something, I, I have something to, I mean, you know what, I, I, I feel good. Last week was horrible, really bad. I, I, it was so bad that I, I almost watched a season of Arrows all throughout one week. So very little time was spent in the, world, in the presence and all. And when I got pinged to speak, I was like, Father in heaven, this is this is really bad. Had it been last week, I would have had something. This week, it's like absolutely nothing. You have to give me something, and I have very very unforgiving people who are asking me this. So, <laughs> God is merciful. You know why? It's not because I Amen. have something or there is something around. There is this confidence that we go into his presence Amen. you know what is that confidence let's go to Romans 8 833 sorry Romans 8:33 who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Amen. Who is he that condemns? Christ Jesus who has died more than that, who was raised to life. It is at his right hand, God, and also is interceding for us. Who can separate us from the love of Christ? This does not go away if somebody just went overboard or forgot to do his daily things. His love is out there and his has been out there even before we knew to read the Bible. If anybody thinks Christendom, the, the height of Christendom is the regularity at which we read the Bible, it's wrong. We are going back to the age of the Pharisees. It is the relationship that we share. If we think that we did something wrong and I will go fast for 15 days and then come, come back to God, it's as good as telling I have a V8, I will run for three miles and then drive in the, get in the car and drive really fast. No. The job has been done for us. Amen. The point where we decide I am going to do it, I pray that you fail. 
because I pray that you fail because there is a better way. The better way has been opened for us. Amen. The Old Testament guys need to, to do this, but we don't. We have it canned, Amen. locked and loaded, and it is handed out in a platter. Yeah. And we don't have to discover it. There are There is a cloud of believers that we associate with who can impart that to us on a daily basis. I am thankful for this church. I know you guys are too. You guys have no idea when it's, when it's to be out there without this cloud. There is nothing breathing life into you. There is everything that sucks life from you. There is nothing good happening for you. But this is what we need to cherish. More than a gathering, there has been done, there's something being done in the heavenlies that is ripe for the taking. Amen. It does not depend on your genealogy. It does not depend upon what you have done Praise last God. week. It is there. It is the confidence with which we need to come and just grab it. Amen. Amen. Now, you go on to the next slide, please. We have this thing of, Lord, I am not that good. There are people who are better than me. This is my own words. I keep telling that. <laughs> but there is an answer for that too. Romans 3.21. Um... Okay, but now a righteousness from God apart from the law has been made known to which the law and prophets testify. That's okay. This righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. This is the best part. There is no difference for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that comes by Jesus Christ. Now, this means all have sinned the best of God's people to the worst all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God this is the worst by which any sinner can come into the presence of God just like any other holy man and also God's word is twofold right it cuts both ways this is the worst by which a brother who is in Christ for a long time becomes humbled Amen. Amen. by the fact that a sinner is as good as him Amen. the moment he accepts Christ. There is no Amen. big brother attitude in Christendom. There shouldn't be. Yes. Right? Now, such an I think I have one more. <laughs> yes. This is the Amen. closing argument. God sees us for not what we are. God sees us in Christ for what we will become. Mm -hmm. when, when people around Jesus called him illegitimate son, when people saw Rahab for what she was, when people saw Mary for what she could have done, God had a distinct vision of what they would become. Amen. And God sees you in your state, yeah. sees me in my state for not what I am, but what I am in Christ. Amen. Now, as a closing argument, I would open Isaiah 55, 11. A friend, after a long time, came back yesterday and blessed me with this verse. I really thank the Lord for that. And the verse, said I had not messed up my Bible. <laughs> As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return it to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and the bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Amen. We have Jerichos. We go against Jerichos, Jerichos will squash us. We go against our sins, our flesh. We will be, they will be locked in a loop of self-condemnation. We go against it in the power of the Lord. 
And don't fake it, it's gonna come. God is gonna take us through. Whatever your situation may be, God is gonna take us through. He's gonna lead us through it, right through. He's not gonna evade it, he's gonna lead us through it. And in humility, if we accept what has been done for us, I assure you, just like how God took us through, we will be a source of tremendous inspiration to people who are going through our situation when we meet them. If we blast through Jericho by our own, we will actually see those people and say, dude, I got this done this way. There's something wrong with you. No, I hope we fail. I hope we fail and rest solely on the promises of God to take us through our Jerichos in life. May the good Lord bless us.